Greetings, everyone, and welcome to yet another exciting edition of Shoulda Had a D8, where we invite friends, fans, family, and the cast to join us as we discuss the events prior on Descent into the Void and Natural Ones. Joining us today, we have the most of the cast of Descent into the Void. First up, we have Travis, who plays King. Hello, everyone. Zeki, who plays Cal. Hey, everybody, it's Zektown. Alex, who plays Monaco. Hey. And Adam, who plays Duran. Brick Squad! Thanks for joining, everybody. Thanks for having us. So, let's winding the clock back as we discuss what happened last time on Descent into the Void. So, we started off with the group split up with Horatio and Monaco witnessing and going through the entire ceremony of... Horatio officially joining the Corporis Arcana. Meanwhile, Cal and Duran holding one of the vampire spawns from the Bloodland captive as they figure out their next move. And King traveling on and waiting for Horatio and Monaco to come out. Horatio was covered in tattoos and was able and was called something uh, an Archon, where of power. Adapting into the elements of war and peace, he was able to grow tattoos and his hair grew and became more feral-like, though more powerful. Uh, and, sh and in this, the wheels began to turn into Judean Sunfell as he immediately dismissed all the people who were watching and told Alara to go ahead and conduct something that would jog their memory, erase their memory, or hold them to some type of code, and she went off to do so. Meanwhile, Judean began to surmise that he could use Horatio's power, in accordance to the deal that they made, to possibly either overthrow or do some type of deed with the Grand Magus, the leader of all the Corporis Arcana. But with that completed, they all headed out and met up with King until you all travel back, alerting them about what happened with the vampire spawnling. You all got together and executed him after getting all the information you needed. Cal talking with Drusilla, the leader of the Bloodland, who said to come alone. And in doing so, he did. You all had traveled back to your manor and after having meals and concocting plans, Cal had went back uh, went to back to the Grey District and there was able to get into the corpor uh, the Bloodlands uh, den, uh, meeting up with Drusilla as, as she turned uh, several travelers into vampires uh, and also revealed some secrets to Cal, saying that he was the, not as we all know, he is the mortal key, but also that he was reincarnated several times over, alluding to that maybe she has something, some prior knowledge or, or a uh, familiarity with one of his past lives, and also revealing the name Eve um, Goren. Uh, but, but with that, she said that she wanted to be an ally and use her use the uh, the mortal key to open up the doorway to get to the layer of darkness where their true home arises, saying that they would leave this place and leave it in peace and then he would open it up for them, not alluding to why it was closed in the first place. In any case, you all uh, rejoined back together, had some conversations along the way, the interesting ones indeed, before finally heading off to complete the ritual. Uh, over at the to find out more information about your weapons uh, with um, Coben. So and then we concluded the session with all of you going to Coben, sitting around and into his magical circle as things began to unfurl. Uh, but that was the gist of what happened last session. So my first question goes to uh, all of you, actually. So. He's not here today, uh, Lewis, but Horatio went through the massive transformation and showed off his abilities. So your thoughts uh, on just the new Horatio? I'm psyched to see him kick a bunch of butt in combat. I think I think he's just... This is the coolest crap ever. He's gonna get popped. It's gonna, someone's gonna crit his face off and he's gonna go down. And then we're gonna be like, Oh, man. Oh, no. <laughs> 
No way. Uh, and then he's not gonna have Revivify, and it's gonna be bad. That would be like if Avatar started with Aang getting struck the lightning bolt by Azula. That was like the first episode. It's not the first episode. He got the fucking power. He's gonna use his power for a little bit, and he's gonna get struck by lightning. And it's gonna be bad. No way. No way. Omar would set up pins for us to knock down with the power first to show off what it does. That's the least. At least he's at least that kind. I hope. You hope he's being that kind. He could just throw us right, right into the lion's den with it and make it a serious challenge. My first thought is power overwhelming. <laughs> For all of you StarCraft fans out there. Does he have a red nostalgia. form and a blue form? He's, he's like, I don't know, he's like the joining of the Dark Templar and of uh, the uh, High Templar now, isn't he? Like, he he's more like a Tassadar at this point. Yeah, but what do you guys think Judean is going to do with that? Like, that's what I'm really worried about. Like, I'm really excited he got this power. Oh, he's totally going to try about, and use it. Yeah. Like, he's going to ride this dude's coattails like a buffalo, man. It's he awesome. changed the words in the, in the Gesh to say he was going to yeah. bring it back to me, not just any yes, Corporus. Yeah, like, last second audible, like, hey, by the way, you're also going to just do all these powerful things just for me and not the actual entire arcana that's not sketchy at all i bet she's gonna try to adopt horatio after this is all over and bring him into his family literally what if he's a um duramo no he's duramo in disguise no (laughs) it's deja vu no We just haven't opened the right closet door yet to see, like, the dead body, like, fall out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You know, like... <laughs> no way. I've been on top of those checks. There's no way. <laughs> Have you now? No, I'm just kidding. There's going to be so many investigations check investigation yeah, checks done now the inside the Well, I've only been on top of them when Durant's not, like, super emotional, which is, like, only, like, one-third of the time. <laughs> He's so overwhelmed with love. In confusion. How could he not be? You gave your life willingly. You can't hold that against me now. (laughs) He intends to spend his whole life held against you. Aww. His whole life. (laughs) All three weeks. (laughs) (laughs) At the end of the campaign. I will say that I have, like, I have a theory. I'm not going to say what it is. And I'm hoping that the theory comes to light because I just feel like I know it would just be very poetic um, but I, I I literally can't rely on it it's like a 90% chance that I'm incorrect but I'm just like if this happens oh my <laughs> goodness but I'm like just holding on to the hope but even I don't know and thanks for DM speculation corner <laughs> <laughs> Where the DM gives the vaguest of teasers, and we have <laughs> literally no idea what he's referring to. <laughs> right? Just the, the, the love and the everything happening between Duran and King. Uh, I, I love it so much. And then, like, I see what I hope Endgame is at the end of the campaign for them. I mean, like, anyone. You could just die. It's D&D. So, but if you guys survive to the end and nothing ridiculous happens that does whatever i can see what i hope the end game can be and i really want it to be there because i think it'll be a great but it's D. it's all up to the dice so i can only it's gonna be like some macbeth ish isn't it <laughs> i just know it i mean i i am a sadistic dungeon master when it comes to storytelling so i like to you need to <laughs> earn those feels <laughs> Yeah, but then Cal's going to be so conflicted because any party member that comes back from death is going to be like, you know, you really shouldn't be right? here. <laughs> right? <laughs> I thought that so much. I was just like, I wonder how Cal's going to feel when, like, you also have bending fate in yours and in your own, uh, or bending the scales in your... Yeah. We'll see. Hopefully one of you will die. Um, I feel like... Hopefully one King of you can, will die. I feel like King, with my plus 10 persuasion, could easily justify bringing back a party member. Unfinished business. Like, that's not the way the scale's supposed to bend. That's not the way the tale's supposed to be. Yeah. Sorry, Sorry go ahead. What were you saying, Alex? I was going to say, could you use that plus 10 persuasion to let Monaco get away with summoning some demons or something? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Joke. Was it, though? Well, it was, because they're actually <laughs> despicable, and they're demons. What are you going to do with them, right? 
Oh, man. You're bidding, I guess. Uh, I, I don't think they do demons. <laughs> I think the joke is that she doesn't actually need any more permission to be war. <laughs> Once she yeah, gets the yeah. power, she won't need permission. <laughs> yeah, well... She don't got the power yet, so she still need to ask. <laughs> well, at least she started talking know. to King about it. Like, I know that's what I was just gonna say. I feel like that's like gonna come up in the next session, and I don't know, or maybe the one after. It's, ooh, it's we'll looming. See. It's looming. That is a dark, dark cloud. <laughs> a cloud that I can't wait till it starts to pour. Mm. It's gonna oh, fucking rain yeah, on me. It's exciting though. <laughs> I'm very excited for it. Oh man, some juicy story. So, uh, and I'll admit, I'll say for full, full, full disclosure and just total candor, um, I I know D and D requires battles, but I'm just like I just find the interaction between the characters so much like more suspenseful than the actual like suspenseful battles so i throw them in there because the fight's gonna happen but i literally love the the role-playing aspect so much because you guys put so much into it so it's very enjoyable to listen back to versus a battle which of course is fun and exciting but we all love the rp i mean i know i do i I do i I think everybody does i I don't want to speak for everybody but i think that's one thing that we love about the show is that we get it so deep into the RP sometimes that, you know, an entire session goes by and it's just like an actual real time <laughs> three or four hours of like the characters' lives. Like that's what, like, you know, only like a couple weeks have gone by in the game, but every hour that you're listening to is almost like an hour of their life. We like fast forward the sleeping and that's pretty much right? it. Yeah, I totally know what you're talking <laughs> about. It's like real time. <laughs> so, yeah, like it's, it's not an upsetting thing either, you exactly. know? So. Um, I like it. It's it's got a good. It's like, it's 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 got a good pace to it where it's very like dramatic. You have these long overhanging plots going, and we're all super into it. We're all really involved, and, and we follow them in this really in like almost to like a minutia level. You know, <laughs> like the way how they close the door behind them, and then they'll say something in the morning. Like we we talk about what breakfast they ate, and it gets it gets um. It makes it feel so real. Yeah. It like really pulls us in. Yeah, I like it now. It's really, high, really high, high like, like an immersive and, and and just listening back in it, it's it's so. That's yeah, it's, yeah, it's great. It's the cream. That's what you mm. want. Sweet it is indeed. But um, sweet cream. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. <laughs> That's like an analogy I've not heard, or like a, an analysis. Of, so weird. Where did you hear that? Well, you know, like uh, the creme de la creme, creme, de, the creme de la creme. Okay, you know, yeah, like we're okay. the top. Like, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. It's what makes it the best. It's the best it stuff. Felt so like. <laughs> I don't know. Mar was like the cream. It's sweet. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> that is OnlyFans A Tale of D20s. That is OnlyFans forward slash A Tale of D20s. <laughs> OnlyFans.com slash A Tale of D20s. <laughs> oh, we're good, dude. Patreon content in the That's chat. so funny. Love it. All right, but <laughs> moving on. Uh, Cal, you had ventured alone. You having Hootie, I would, which I would say was a, was a really good idea, uh, for the most part. Um, on your side, uh, you went off and presented yourself to the Blood Lend, going and seeing it was some sort of like jazz nightclub uh, with a performance. It looked pretty legit, there like was... fancy. And then you saw there was a lot, going a lot on. going on. Indeed, you saw. Uh, people going behind the scenes and you with that high perception I think it was an at 20 you definitely witness people getting bit for their pleasure mm-hmm. yes so, um, you, uh, Cal probably could definitely look from the elation in their eyes I'm pretty sure it felt very good you know like yeah I'm sure they they felt like that's exactly what they wanted to be doing at that mm-hmm. moment they knew what they were getting into and no one was dying mm. well to your knowledge anyway that we know of, that we well, saw. Except those three people were, whose necks got snapped. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, those people that I watched. But they wanted to die. 
They they were going on their own. Well, I don't volition. think they wanted to die. I think they wanted to not die, it's, but they had to get killed in order to get there. Yes. Oh, very complex. Then. But like, would you do it? Would you be a vampire? Oh, yes. No. Um. Yes. What kind of vampire? I don't care. Close your eyes. You cannot see anything. Okay, I give a command. Just that's like what you. Just, who wants to live like that? I mean, it's some I will, boss over your head. You will always have someone over your head, no matter where you are. That's not a problem being a vampire. I, th- I don't. Know. I think I would be fine with being like a Dresden like, Files white court vampire, like a I like psychic or like a vampires. Lestat, like a Lestat. Um, I definitely would wouldn't mind being a teenage uh, fiction fantasy. Romance. Okay, like if we're gonna be vampire. a teen lit, oh, teen no. lit okay, I, okay, a teen lit fanfic vampire drama. If I could be one of those vampires, yeah, yeah sure, sure. That's, those are the best stuff. That's, oh, yeah. that's the, the I mean, you said which one you want to be. No reason not to be. That's like the best of both worlds. That's the best of all worlds. Like vampire, the anime okay. Dio Brando I'll, vampire. That's like oh, the one yeah. that shoot lasers so, out his fingers and stuff. It just needs to be able to pose dramatically and look absolutely gorgeous. Right? That's true. Anime vampires are just ridiculous. They're like, we have powers of anything we want because we're anime vampires. <laughs> anime. Yeah, okay. That's the vampire we can I do want whatever we want. I'm Dio. There's an anime vampire out there listening to this cast right now. Um, hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> my neck is yours. <laughs> OMG at Travi is my Twitter. <laughs> Uh, oh, gee. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm, I, I'm a thrive in the nighttime. I'm fine with this. If you do teenage vampire lip, they can. They have magic rings that make it so they survive in the sunlight, or some type of reason, so they can get into sunlight. They glitter or whatever. <laughs> it's just too. Yeah, you can't be in direct sunlight because you can glow too much. <laughs> An it's anime too vampire that's would unnatural. have like a, like a parasol, or you'd only encounter them on the edge of the shade of a tree. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm gonna be like the weird freak who wears a walks around with a parasol in the middle of the summer uh, and wears gloves. Uh, 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 like a weirdo. Victorian. Gentle speculation. <laughs> she wants to make uh, dr- uh, uh, Dras- Drusilla wants to make um, the mortal key into undead. In order to prevent him from uh, reincarnating or whatever. OMG, that would totally break the cycle. Yeah, so she just invites him to be a vampire, but he's like a Kellen Borges. He'd never go for that. But maybe he would. No. Because it's tempting, so like, I don't know, just a gentle speculation. She wants to invite him into the court. Oh. That's a good thought. Oh, that's that is a theory. very good uh, theory. He's like, let me write that down. I'm getting a notepad. <laughs> no, I already know. No, I already have all that done. I have this entire floor and everything that's going that can happen already written and set in stone. But I'm finding it very interested in your actual theories and comparing to what actually will happen. Also, I think he's wearing a wire. What? <laughs> I think we're all wearing wires. All right, but so. My first question, actually, uh, goes to Zeki for Cal. Uh, this will, to wrap it up, and then you spent time with uh, Drusilla and learned many different secrets. So what is, walk us through Cal's mindset, going through the doorway, seeing all this, meeting Drusilla, seeing the maps that just disappeared at the end, and weird mirrors, and then watching people turn into vampires, or in the process, and then that interaction. I think he knew that he was at a severe disadvantage in terms of doing many things that could have been actionable. So he kind of just had to go with what was happening. There was like 50 other vampires in the room or something like that. And there was no way that he was going to be able to make it out of there alive if he would have just started shooting as much as he wanted to like stop the ceremony prevent these people who are probably being charmed anyways or they have some kind of like vampire toxin in their blood that's like making them want to be like here please uh, and like that's that's what he would be thinking is going on um, but then the whole thing with um, the reincarnations and 
the potential. I think we even made it into like a uh, a player theory, like while we were playing or like shortly right after us. So I don't know if it got recorded uh, that the reincarnations flip flop between Hades and Kalemvor. Every reincarnation getting a different one. So I don't know if that was like in the game itself. I can't remember exactly, but I know we like briefly talked about it. Or we said, "What if there's two of you? One of you." Yeah, that is was like the... that was the other. That was the flip side of the options. There might have been two of us at the same time, and maybe like, what if one of you is like the keyhole and the other one is the key, and together you open the door, the actual door. What if it's something like we end up having some sort of showdown and us clashing and getting into close proximity? exhibiting our powers like the powers combine like i'm thinking of like two like like in like dragon ball z or something with two energy balls like hitting each other and like exploding crazy but maybe that no. explosion is what opens the door are you the key master apparently yeah i guess i would be but then is the other one the Gatekeeper, King, if they say, if someone asks you if you're a god, you say yes. <laughs> I know, because I am. I don't yeah, think he, yeah, I don't for think sure. would, if they were like, are you a god king, would be like, well, you know, I don't want to say anything, but... <laughs> Technically, <laughs> <laughs> I have no expectations to what's going to happen because I just want it to happen. Because if I lean one way, and I, I'm not going to be able to play right as the DM, so I'll have to do what I feel is right in that moment. So I'm. That's how it goes, baby. <laughs> in the that's moment, why it, that's why it's D and D. I'm like, I was thinking, I was like, what if? you guys go off negative to Monaco revealing what if it's po- and if, what if it's positive and it'll just be normal but what if you guys are so- there's like a rift and I'm like you know what I'm not gonna think about it I'll see what happens and I'll just go with it Which- you guys better be good no there's- promises <laughs> there's most definitely gonna be a rift like zero promise <laughs> it's gonna be this whole sub arc of Monaco and Horatio finding themselves both together and together against the rest of the party and how we all have to come together. I would... I, I, I don't want to say anything because I don't want anything to be influenced, nor do people think that we're influenced anything once they listen back to this. Uh, I will say that I want drama. <laughs> now, yeah, no, I, I think that's that's what's going to happen. I think it's also going to be for like the rest of the party and the, the two of them, like a big um, story and a lot of moments about forgiveness and like what that means and, you know, coming to um, a level of catharsis with yourself that allows you to forgive the other person not necessarily just because they've done all these other things on top of it it's it's like a it'll be a, like a personal thing for each character i think i i think every character at some point uh is going to go through a moment of the uh, a moment where well now i'm saying every single character but the dichotomy of the the makeup of how the group is with you have King and Duran uh, and Monaco and Horatio and then also the interwoven relationship between each of everyone there uh, not discounting Cal because now we're discovering the truth about Cal and I feel like we're going to get to the inner mush of who Cal is and his uh, emotional anchor but everyone else kind of has like this emotional connection and I'm curious to see how it all just unfurls and all that. And I think it's going to bring a lot of drama coming there. And, I, and like, I think everyone. Oh, totally. And I just had this vision in my mind because I pictured Cal and the scale, the Kalimvor scale. And there's clearly King and Duran on one side of that scale and Monaco and Horatio on the other. And Cal is guess where? In right. the middle of in that scale. The middle. Right in the middle. But yeah, but the thing is, like, you also 
throughout this campaign, even prior to all the people have listened to, there's definitely a relationship of almost like a leadership relationship between King and Horatio, where they have separate forms of way that they want to lead the party. Um, but and they they butt heads all the time. And you, there was so there's many different sections when Horatio and King have butt heads, but they've always come to like but we work together well together so then the, that entire all that puts little chinks here and there and now is this whole lie going to make it all come crumbling down because like we saw a taste of that when Galdrum came into the picture and you guys were completely split but is that totally mended or are we going to see the uh, the I don't think that it's totally mended and it very mel, very way mel very may well be the like the straw that breaks the camel's mm-hmm. back. It might be. Uh, I'm not sure. I definitely, like Adam said before, I don't want to think about it too much because I want it to feel natural, but I do feel like it is going to be hard for King to like let it go or accept it, especially in the very beginning. And I think that you're right. You, you know, Horatio and I did butt heads, especially with the leadership aspect. Um, many times, but I feel like we sort of were at, I don't want to say extreme ends of the spectrum, but we were definitely on opposite sides and pulled each other towards the center of, of the rationale spectrum, I guess, and sort of helped each other balance. But now King might think like, was he just tricking me this whole time and leading me astray from what I should have been doing like when i was trying to be more pragmatic even though it was killing those pig people and goblin people it was the right thing to do they were like definitively evil and he justified reasoning with them and now king might be like that was wrong they were evil and should have died you know what i mean so i I don't know he's gonna think back everything down the from the path of being a tyrant i don't think that he like doesn't think that he's a tyrant and i personally in i know that we joke around and say that sometimes he king has tyrant like tendencies especially in the beginning and i'm that was trying to be a young and naive person trying to grow into a very heavy leadership role um i have literally zero expectations or literal zero intentions of trying to be a tyrant so in those times where i feel like i'm being harsh king is thinking of it as being pragmatic Mm -hmm. and relies on his allies to rein him back when it crosses the line into cruel or evil or you know because i don't think that king would ever get to a point of cruelty or evil especially with a good deity with inside of him but more like cross the line of that was too much with regards to a ruling or a law. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I'm trying to be abstract and it's kind of hard, but you get what I'm saying or no? Well, King, I think that King Hole has these high standards and that sometimes people can't live up to those standards because they're just people. That's, that's true too. And he needs to realize that that doesn't mean, you know, that they're terrible people or whatever it's that people are people and you need to adjust and evaluate accordingly i find king but- i had a conversation with lewis a while back and i'm going to amend what i said in the conversation and having on the recording i compared your two characters as the the character the the protagonist and the the protagonist of the story and the like hero of the story or 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 something like this whereas in, in putting in aspect of anime i said that he's more of a naruto and you're more like Sa- and king is more like sasuke and then to go even further into it now this is super anime nerd some of you might not get this but then the um if you look at digimon and you look at tai and you look at oh my god <laughs> and you look at uh um, pk yeah i, I can't remember I can't remember matt and tai no, yes, Matt and Ty, but I was trying it's to remember. It's definitely Matt and Ty. Yeah, I was going to say yes. Matt and Ty, but yes, Ty and Matt. I see as, because Horatio is extremely optimistic, and that optimism sometimes blinds him to the reality, whereas King is very pragmatic, but but is usually like straight to it, succinct, succinct and gets to the point. And that's literally how the two characters in Digimon lead, because right now they're, they're, the new Digimon's out and I'm watching it. So, and it's like, I see them too. I'm like, there's King and there is 
was uh, Horatio. And then, like, they butt heads so many times, and in the end, it became two best friends, and they fuse their powers in anime, anime. But... So I feel like that's what we're in the in the process of like butting heads and coming apart, coming back together, and like we balance off of each other in like a good way. Mm-hmm. Or I f- I felt like we were working towards, you know, I don't know if he's my I don't know if Horatio's my best friend, but I feel like we're becoming very close and very good friends, and I consider him a strong ally of mine, and. I don't know. What you just described sound like something cool. Hopefully we could do something like that in the future. Definitely. I mean, I'm curious. And then like in Digimon, there was that one time when they like they were like going back to the real world in Digimon where they everyone split up because Ty and Matt were like F you, you lead that way, and then some people went with him. F you, you lead that way, and some people with that, and eventually they needed each other, and that's what. And I'm just like, not that that's gonna happen, nor am I planning that for what's gonna happen. But I'm like, is this whole lie gonna be that thing that that pew, and then we see that kind of rift? Obviously, it's D and D, so hopefully, you all just still party together. <laughs> I, I have some strong feelings and words about the relationship with Digimon characters that I can't say on recording because <laughs> there's some pretty harsh words. Um, <laughs> but I, I think this is gonna. I think we've been through moments like this where people's truths come to light. And I think the fabric of our team, like that that unity, that friendship that makes the team, is gonna be strong enough to survive whatever comes next. Right. I, I see. Like, um, you know, like the scene in uh, Hercules when the witch is trying to like cut the life string, and he's being like heroic. And then it turns to, like, gold, and they can't cut it. I feel like that's our fabric underneath. And right now, Omar, as the DM, is like, let's just slice it down with this drama, and it's going to turn into a golden sheet, and we're going to be okay in the long run. But it's going to ruffle the beginning a little bit, because... Well, I feel like like all really big emotional events like this, the team's going to come together and be better for it. Just like how King and Duran came together after a big fight. Mm-hmm. And that Omar is going to sucker punch us or something bad, like, game-wise, while our characters are sorting out their interpersonal nonsense. <laughs> a bad guy is going to be, like, in the background loading a bomb into a ship. No, all of the evil undead are going to overrun the city, and Grey District's going to fall. <laughs> oh, man, I'm so excited for next session, if we get we there. We didn't save the city, but we saved ourselves. <laughs> right? I could just bamf us the F out. And we saved we got our a few friendship. Ways to leave. That's true. Bye, Felica. <laughs> right. Um, so, one, uh, and well, before I get to the overall theme, uh, the one, la- the last big event that transpired is that you all finally went over to Coben's and started to give your weapons each of you giving uh into the weapon uh duran had already given and learned some new things although we'll learn more uh from his magnetic blade that's still looking that still needs to be named as well as king with new chastiful and horatio with oh i can't <laughs> wait can i i'm not gonna drop any like major secrets but can i give like a tiny don't tiny... give anything because it's nothing going to be from this recording oh, okay. three days from now or two days from now <laughs> <laughs> I've had a name for this sword like ever, like since two days after I got it. So why didn't you name it? <laughs> oh no! Just waiting for the moment. I have to name it in story. I can't just name it for no reason. I mean, you can do as you see fit. Uh, uh, Horatio gave the staff of Alcelar, so maybe we'll find out some some juicy goods on the your old friend the Pontifex. And Cal gave his his key opening door opening key unlocking super secret who knows uh artificer guns of kalimvor made by his adoptive father uh and then of course things begin to swish and moan and magic was happening with this mage um so any thoughts and then you all can go on one by one uh we'll start with cal uh thoughts on what you might learn or get from this reading with your uh, double magic pistols. I am hoping that some vision of truth about where I should be aiming these revolvers is what is going to happen. It's going to manifest itself as like a moment of clarity and like a true focus or like a true shot sort of moment 
like getting a, like a closer connection with these revolvers and hopefully it like through the power of Kalemvor like guides the balanced path of like what he should be doing next and like why maybe his adoptive father stole him away from both factions you know like what is that middle path of inaction versus what I'm being faced with now in taking action and how that kind of balances out. I think that's what's kind of going to happen. Mm. Or I, that's what I envision happening. I hope it happens because that'd be really sweet. Interesting. <laughs> and Monaco giving her wand. Uh, we don't actually know much about Monaco's weaponry or where she gets it from, but we might not find any prediction on, unless you think it will give away anything about your backstory, anything expecting from your reading with your wand. Oh, um... I expect it to be bad news, or perhaps something terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I will admit, Monaco's story is a tragedy, but I'm, I'm optimistic it will turn into an uplifting... Uh, I want to have a happy ending for her. I, want, I will say I want one too, but it's up to the dice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Durand giving his magnetic blade anything you any predictions we know a whole mess of the magnetic bl- we know a whole mess of of question marks from the magnetic blade coben saying that from what he studied it was definitely something chaotic like from within the void that he sent from it but that's all stuff you knew already uh i don't imagine any good news i'm not expecting anything good it's cast yeah, it's so cool. I'd never get to use it because, you know, you know, the husband. <laughs> yeah, if I can't mage wars, mage wars, mage wars, you can't use the fucking chaos blade. That's bullshit. <laughs> you know, if, if, if King of Chaos Magic that kills Duran, I think Duran should be able to dip into some chaos blade every once in a while. You're going to taint my soul. You're bound to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god you know what I totally picture I see uh, this will go over some people's heads but uh, the in League of Legends the uh, Varus thing when they all with the two Varus oh. guy the, the him and his lover fuse into one and it's like tainting his soul and he turned to Varus <laughs> no yes um, but uh, and, and last but not least King giving the new Chastiful 2.0 anything uh, we know it breaks into Unicorns, that's about it. Breaks into pieces and summons cool steed mount mode. Yeah, I I think that I don't know, I don't want to be too hopeful, but I hope that it turns into like this badass power staff where like I get some cool new abilities because the healing uh le- healing uh Cure Wounds in it, Lesser Restoration, and Mass Cure Wounds is super useful, and I use it a lot. And the fact that I can fly on it, too, is fantastic. And now I've been practicing, so I'm super agile and can do tricks is helpful. But I feel like a spirit of a unicorn and, uh, like, when I was speaking to my god, like, a magical being went into it, and... Uh, that could have been a demigod or another superpower. So this staff got some magic in it. Like, and I want to unlock its secrets and like really know what it can do because ultimately from King's perspective, he's excited to learn about the power because he can use it to protect his friends and he can use it to protect his lover and he can use it to help everyone like solve the issues of his friends and be the King that he proclaims himself to be. You know, right now he is an envoy for Queen Camilla and he takes that duty seriously. So to be a powerful and important person, sometimes you need to have, you know, what's the thing? Put up or shut up? So I got to put up, you know what I mean? I got to get that, pull out that power, you know? So I'm ready to... Also, I feel like if I greater attune myself to the staff and use it as a conduit to cast my magic more directly through it it itself might be able to help charge or lessen the burden of 
the life force I take from Duran because I can tap into the soul of the thing inside the staff itself. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know exactly, but that's sort of like what I think it might do too. Interesting. I have definitely, a, uh, like so much that I have a script written for each of the reveals. Some people have more than others because some people have more magic more than others um, in their things, but there's definitely a almost like a communion of your weapons is what's going on here, so I hope you all enjoy. That is what yeah. it is. You keep saying reading, and it's been a ritual. You make me think they're going to pull Miss Cleo. Uh, Call of it No, now. I said reading as I'm like, <laughs> I'll be reading what's happening. Yeah. So a lot of the times I, co- I go off the cuff just so I can flavor it with, because you guys are like, I'm going to combine this, that, and this weird shit. So I'm like, don't have that prepared, so I have to go off the top of my head. <laughs> um, but this, um, because I already knew what all your weapons would do, more, more or less. We've been talking about this for a yeah, long, long so it's time. it's about time we got to get some uh, <laughs> power-ups. That's what the listeners are coming for. I'm just like, I wonder how overpowered you guys are going to get, because then I'll just have to keep ramping up the... Like, you, you guys have never faced an actual normal creature. I'm just like, this is what would happen for people who don't have vagaries, this, that, and a third in homebrew. So I'm like, and same thing to the monsters to get them so they're on the same level. So I do the same thing. <laughs> you want your people to feel powerful. Yeah. Just make quadruples of HP and let them smash at it. You know what I mean? Like I give them a new ability. <laughs> that's what makes it dramatic. Yeah, and I'm just like, you yeah. would have an ability that would let you do this. This should be fun. It's like, there's half your HP. But you can easily heal it back with your. Let me just dance around people and stuff. So it's it's balanced. So far, it's <laughs> oh, yeah. still balanced enough. So I'm curious to see how I'm gonna balance these these possible power ups. Would be very especially exciting. if we just start smashing through stuff. It's like oh well, this next one it magically has these extra abilities oh. and is like <laughs> heavily armored. Look at that! It just summoned more armor for itself. Yeah. Like, oh, did you not know? <laughs> Sorry, Doram was watching you from his super godly something, and boof, he just powered them up for you. <laughs> Just cause. <laughs> oh, good, good. That's DM information. Duramo is a go. No, I'm just Half Life Three confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it should be a really great, uh, a really great, sh- um, ca- I'm gonna say not campaign. Very good a session. I can't wait to see it all for all. And I just literally can't wait because in 24 hours from this moment, that's a little bit later, but uh, in less than 24 hours, we have finally the gala. And will we ever get to Mage Wars? Who knows? Uh, Mage Wars, Mage Wars, Mage Wars. That gala, man. We've been talking about this gala for literally months. This is like, it's like months. We need to, the day you got here, they're like, and actually not even, you were in Beach Bell and they were like, I heard there's a, there was one mention of possibly a gala coming up. I don't think you guys picked it up. And then when you got there, they're like, oh, the gala, unless you did. Uh, they were like, the gala, and then like, so this gala has been just like, so it's just going to be quite the event. If you, uh, when you guys get there, so I cannot wait. Will you guys level before you get there? We'll see after this session. You're actually pretty close to leveling. I'm so scared of what's gonna happen at the Gala. We're gonna. Also, we're gonna the Gala. It's. It could pronounce either way, but I, it, I don't know what is the best way. I've. I've heard Gala like my yeah, whole life. I've heard Gala. You know, well. We looked it up and it was like pronunciation is Gala. Someone said Gale on a TV show. We're like, what the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> I it up and it was, yeah. It's pronounced Gala, but Gala. we're. Mm-hmm. I think we should commit to Gala at this point. Yeah. It's good. In Dusthaven, it spells Gala. I'm galling <laughs> on that. Uh, I have this, like, secret fear that we're going to meet the king and he's just totally being controlled by Judean. And we're gonna see through that, but no one else is. And then we have to like try to save the king, but like, how do we do that? And then we're Especially just, now that he rejoined the like, chorus. Yeah, oh and, my God. And it's gonna be like, gods, damn it. <laughs> we have to save a queen, and now we have to save a king and this entire plane of existence at the same time. Judean, nope. it'd be so bad if Judean was controlling him. It would be so embarrassing because then Judean would be the one we'd have to go to help for, and Judean would be like, "What? Oh, so you come back for my help now?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what if Judean's like actually acting for Doramo, and that's like we're just handing him the keys of the castle and not 
No, then Omar doesn't no. want to w- play the campaign then, because then that's like literally every person we've ever met is on, in Drama's pocket, and there's no way to win. <laughs> I don't know if not everybody. We have I to mean, have some I allies. I feel like Queen Camilla was not, but... Yeah. You have tons of allies. Yeah. We should definitely check on her to make sure she's still alive. And I, and I think... <laughs> and I, yeah, number one, that... Yeah, but... All I, I think, your dream was a few days ago, right? <laughs> so she yeah. might not be. And I think that the king is a good guy too. It's just I don't think he's in control of himself. What? Like I everyone's think... been whispering it every time we talk to exactly. somebody about the king. They're like, oh, oh, like the Arcanus is like really telling them what to do. Like they're the ones that are really in control of everything. It's like I feel like I have like this, like I was saying, like this fear that we're gonna meet him and he's gonna be like, oh, it's nice to meet you. Uh, this I haven't heard anything about you. Like what's going on? And either he's, like, not gonna be able to help us because, like, there's, like, a mental block on him from, like, remembering certain things or something. I don't know. I just feel like it's gonna be bad news and we have to, like, save the king now, too. Which is good drama. And (laughs) Good drama. (laughs) Yeah. All I have to say is, uh, leading to, first of all, that... I can't wait now, definitely to the gala, and then you can all see. <laughs> oh no! Uh, what did I do? Uh, and you'll all see exactly what it is. It's very interesting. Uh, I will say to Travis's point with just like, there's everyone's in whoever's pocket and all that. Um, not confirming or denying that at all, uh, but I will say everything that happens from here on out or from what you've experienced is definitely a consequence from losing the North Row. <laughs> it's like you know how like timelines sort of like shift that was like a very big fork and now you're like this way so this would n- never have happened like in total do you guys like Himalayan or sea salt poured in your wounds? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying I... cause this kosher salt is getting grigid girl I prefer the extra potassium that gives the Himalayan salt the pink hue that is makes it makes it so famous the pink orange uh hue. thanks geologist <laughs> i kind of feel like consequence is a funny codified way of saying punishment it's not a punishment it's this has been an amazing story so far i'm actually glad that and i had absolutely no it was kind of like i don't know what to prepare if you win or lose i have an idea i know what's going to happen but i would then be reflective and then so and I was halfway thinking, I was 90% sure, uh, 80% sure you would win. And then, like, you guys did, did the spear, so spear versus spear, their spear hit harder. Um, and then and then all this happened. I feel like looking at what I thought would have happened versus what this happened, I think this turned out to be such a more be- uh, such a better story. <laughs> um, and so, um, it's, so, like, it caused it to be so much more dramatic, and I'm just... Excite, excited. So I see as the North has a blessing, and I'm not trying to throw salt on it. I'm just showing that that was a pivotal point. Like if fans want to go back and analyze and say, "Oh, that this that, and that," what was the catalyst to start these events? Yes, fans, please go back and see how Cal and Monaco broke King's plan immediately <laughs> and ruined the battle for us. And he's a uh, at Zek Town. <laughs> you can at me all day. But we generally did not have a very strong plan, and <laughs> our plan, our plan was to go separate ways and then see what happens, and try to get extra bonuses, and that is what we did. And then he just at Z E K T O W N. You can send all that analysis to him. <laughs> Please do. But listen, uh, <laughs> I will say, listening back to the episode, it is so dramatic. It does keep you on the edge of your seat. It's really good, though. Um, but the one overall theme, as uh, Zeki had so um, uh, artfully put, is just that the Corporis are everything. That everyone seems to not trust the Corporis except for the Corporis themselves, and then anyone else who's who's a normal person. But everyone in power just like, oh, blah, 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 the Corporis are bad. Like, yeah, I'm a bloodthirsty vampire, <laughs> but the Corporis are bad. 
Yeah, all the druid and the elves are like, oh, oh, like, oh we're fine, but don't, 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 don't trust them. <laughs> <laughs> don't trust the corporis, they're evil. And then, like, knowing the... Oh, we're the secret order of knights, don't trust the corporis. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> like, literally everyone is telling us Even not an to ex trust them. Even an or or retired corporis is like, oh, hmm, yeah, I don't really trust that Judean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh, I left that clubhouse a while ago. I haven't been back. Yeah, they haven't been the same since Judean uh, Sun Sun Bell. Who are you, Judean? Judean. 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 And then more questions <laughs> will be revealed. <laughs> yeah. Um, Get your notebooks out. <laughs> but um, we, I can't wait until see what happens next. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. Thanks so much to the wonderful cast of Descent to the Void. Thank you all for joining me today as we discuss uh, the past events. Uh, everyone out there, we love you so much. Thank you for listening. From the first chapter to the last page, be kind to yourselves and love one another. See you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye. Bye.